and welcome to the last show of the school year. Coming up, we look back on the year, teachers getting silly strings and pied, advice from seniors and seniors' favorite memories. If you want to take a walk down memory lane, all UI elementary schools are hosting a reception for graduating seniors next Friday from 3 to 4 p.m. Graduation is next Sunday at the Schottenstein Center. Seniors must arrive by 8.30 a.m. and the ceremony, the ceremony starts at 9.30 a.m. All seniors get one free parking pass for their household and any additional vehicles may pay a $10 parking fee. The Asian American and Pacific Islander Association is inviting all students to help create an interactive art piece and learn more about the AAPI culture. This is happening along the Golden Bear Boulevard during lunch today. Today is the last day to nominate a student or staff member for a VBO award. Nominations are for the entire second semester. Now Caroline gets a little silly with a little string for an organization land on a cure. <laughs> After the Ambassadors of Change Group reached its fundraising goal for the nonprofit organization Land on a Cure earlier in the year, several teachers agreed to have a pie thrown at them or to be sprayed with silly string. <laughs> 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 The group waited until spring for the teacher prank in order to wait until the number of COVID cases went down. Sophomore Megan Calloway had the idea in December to organize the, the fundraiser for the Land on the Cure organization, in which science teacher Mrs. Woodland started when her son Landon was diagnosed with a rare genetic disorder caused by a mutation in the TBCD gene. Land on a Cure is working to find a cure for rare genetic disorders. Thank you to all who donated towards the cause. This has been Caroline Hackett reporting for the WARL. Thanks, Caroline. Student Council is looking for videos from seniors to play at the Senior Breakfast next Friday. Check out our Instagram post to submit your videos into a Google Drive. If you're looking to get in shape, Planet Fitness is giving high school students a free membership to any location of their choice through August 31st. More information can be found on their website. A study from scientist Daisy Fancourt shows that attending concerts lower stress hormones. If you want to help de-stress before the next school year, Popular artists such as Rex Orange County, Wallows, and Tame Paula are playing around Columbus this summer. And now to Delia and Elena with sports. Monday night, varsity boys volleyball played in the OCC Challenge, defeating Delaware 2-0. They take on 21 seed Newark tonight in the first round of the OHSAA tournament. They are the 13th seed in the region. Freshman Will Poff was named honorable mention while OCC, all OCC... Cam Rao was named second team All-OCC, and senior captain Rory Brennan was named first all-team OCC. Varsity girls lacrosse played home versus Hilliard Bradley in the high school OHSAA tournament. They won 18-0, and they play again tonight against Gehanna Lincoln at 6 at the mark. Tuesday, varsity softball played against Gehan er, Lincoln High School in the OHSAA tournament at Pickerington Central High School. They lost 0-1. Track and field will run at districts this weekend as 4x200 team of Max Gillum, Kaden Woods, Theo Constantinides, and Joey Blank. They set a new school record with a time of a minute and 30 seconds, point three nine, breaking the previous record of one minute and 30.11 seconds. Patrick visited Huntington Park to get a taste of baseball summer. Columbus Clippers welcomed fans back to Huntington Park for the first time in the 2022 season. They swept their homestand, winning all six games, and currently hold a record of 13-7 and seven on the season. I talked with Jordan Arnowitz, an intern for the Columbus Clippers, who's in charge of sales management. I asked him about what he enjoys about being at the ball ballpark every night. I've always been interested in baseball, especially close to Columbus and especially in Cincinnati. It's a great group of people that you're surrounded with. We have a great support staff that helps the interns kind of learn the entire business. You get to experience a lot of different things, selling tickets, bringing guest services, doing promotions, and kind of having a full experience that is different from another internships that I've looked at. If you're interested in becoming an intern for the Columbus Clippers, applications must be in by January 1st of 2022. Visit the MILB.com website under the Columbus Clippers page.
This has been Patrick Ray reporting for the WARL. Clippers play away versus the Iowa Cubs, and on May 24th, they have back-to-back -back homestands at Huntington Park. Tickets can be purchased for all of their upcoming games at MILB.com. Boys Lacrosse cruised through the first two rounds of the state playoffs, beating Gehanna Lincoln in the opening round and then beating Darby 19-4 yesterday. Eight of the guys were named to the first team all-region, while newly Cleveland State commit Drew Graves made the second team. Baseball defeated Reynoldsburg 5-0 in the first round of the OSHA tournament last night after only making it five innings Wednesday due to inclement weather. They travel to Lancaster next Tuesday for the regional quarterfinals. We would like to thank all the coaches and athletes for such an incredible year of UA athletics. There's still plenty more to come. Let's go, Bears. And now to Ava, Caroline, Kennedy, and Elliot's live on location. Summertime festivities kick off next week with Memorial Day. Upcoming activities include the Farmer's Market hosted every Wednesday starting next week, the UACA Memorial Day run, and UA pools open next weekend. To learn more information about summer activities, go to UpperArlingtonOH.gov. The Upper Arlington Civic Association has already started preparing for the annual 4th of July festivities. Our location report this week looks at the history and plans for this popular summer celebration of our country's independence. The first Upper Arlington 4th of July celebration was organized by the Upper Arlington Civic Leave in 1923 and included a cannon salute at sunrise, a flag ceremony, a grand march, athletic events, a potluck picnic, an orchestra for dancing, and fireworks to cap off the day's activities. The event that we all know and love today is modeled after Field Day, which was started in 1917 by the city of Grandview. This year, festivities will begin with Paul Revere Paul Revere wake-up calls at 6.30 and the parade beginning at 9. The annual parade is filled with floats from different organizations and streets in Upper Arlington and the surrounding areas. Parade Chairman Sam Porter said that around 90 entries expected to be in the parade this year. The application deadline is due June 14th. There are multiple awards given to the best entries, which include Best Parade, Best Youth Group, Best Design and Craftsmanship, and many more. This year, the Upper Arlington Civic Association is adding Diverse Ability Zone for the individuals that are on the spectrum. This zone will be located at the Trinity Church and parade entries are asked to turn down their volume to 50% while passing through to make sure that all viewers of the parade have an enjoyable time. In the early years of the modern day 4th of July, themes were not a priority or perhaps not even thought about. The first ever theme on record is from 1932. In the 1950s, flow builders were encouraged to develop their own theme, but starting in the 1960s, themes were regularly decided upon. The 4th of July theme this year is Stars, Stripes, and Trailblazers, with Grand Marshal and U.S. Army veteran John Bergman leading the way. He turns 102 this July. Times and events are subject to change based upon weather conditions, and participants are asked to follow all current COVID-19 safety guidelines. The party continues with the party in the park and the fireworks. Tables go on sale Wednesday, June 1st at 12 p.m. They're $300 for non-UAC members and $250 for members. Parking opens at 5 p.m. with the party starting at 5.30. The UACA will also have Kona Ice, Graders, and Schmitz, and many others. The grand finale is capped off right here with a fireworks show starting at 10 p.m. Full schedule of this year's 4th of July can be found on the UACA website. Themed t-shirts and a 1985 replica button for this year's event are now available for sale and will be available through June 5th. They can be purchased through the Upper Arlington Civic Association's website. Make sure to bring your patriotic spirit because Upper Arlington's 4th of July celebration is one of the largest non-commercial parades in the United States. And now we throw it over to community with Nora, Kira, Carter, and Sophia. The annual Community Spring Fling is happening this Saturday from 11 to 2 p.m. Activities include fishing, carnival games, live music, and previews of some summer programs. The Upper Arlington Historical Society is inducting cultural arts contributor Donald Lawrence Dodrill and filmmaker slash photographer Robert W. Wagner into the Wall of Honor during a ceremony on Sunday, May 22nd. To find summer volunteer opportunities, students can visit the UA Public Library Volunteer Program website and explore various volunteer opportunities in our community. Kennedy takes a look at what advice seniors wish to leave behind for underclassmen. After four years of high school and two buildings, the class of 2022 is getting ready to graduate on May 29th. As they begin to look back on their high school careers, I look to get advice for underclassmen on how they can make the most of their high school experience. Work hard, play hard. Stay ahead of your schoolwork and take classes you enjoy. Uh, my advice for underclassmen is to um, like do your assignments and not procrastinate. Everyone make sure just to live in the moment, don't go too far ahead, don't overthink it and just take your time, especially with classes and interactions with other people and your friendships and then make sure you take some sort of like personal finance, it's really really helpful and just try your best. Underclassmen, you guys cannot stand in the middle of the hallway, just keep, keep going your life will be great, you won't get shoved or pushed. Eat a lot of food so you can bulk up. 
my advice is that even if you have like the slightest interest in art or drawing, take an art class immediately. My advice for an underclassman would be uh, pay attention in class. My advice for underclassmen is to get a routine for like homework and assignments so you don't get like overwhelmed and stressed out. Do your homework, but still have fun. Be a self-advocate. If you're struggling and you need help, ask a question. Or if you need more time on an assignment, make sure you speak up. Make friends with everyone that'll help you in the future. I would recommend to get all your gen eds out of the way, like, so you can have more freedom in your schedule. And also for uh, incoming seniors, write your college essay over the summer. It relieves a lot of stress. Um, some advice I have for underclassmen is just to enjoy every moment and cherish it all because it's going to go by really fast. This has been Kennedy Beebe reporting for the WARL. Stop by the College Center throughout your four years to start making plans for your future. The City of Columbus Black International Film Festival is going from this Saturday to Sunday to showcase black filmmakers locally, nationally, and internationally. It, pro it proves an opportunity for the community to learn about the film industry through film workshops and panel discussions, a space to showcase film and networking opportunities as well. After mo more than two years as a digital event, COSI's Big Science Celebration returned in person from May 4th to the 7th. The four-day event drew anywhere from 25,000 to 30,000 people. The event showcased STEM areas to the public in subjects ranging from academics to pharmaceuticals to zoology. Kids could even make liquid nitrogen ice cream. They hope to continue this event in the upcoming years. Now let's toss, toss it, it over to live interview. interview. Seniors, after today, we have four days left of high school. My favorite me memory from high school was senior homecoming. What about you, Kaya? Mine was my global history class this semester with Mr. Bash. Now, let's take a look at what other seniors' favorite memories are. Uh, my favorite memory was probably prom this year. I had a good time, and then I had a really great time with Mr. Bash as my teacher for the past two years. My favorite memory is when Kim Brown made me do 10 reps with a huge water bottle. My favorite high school memory was uh, clapping randomly at lunch, just for no reason at all, this year and freshman year. Favorite memory is probably second period study hall with these ladies. <laughs> My favorite memory is having Mr. Wagner three times for three different classes. My favorite memory was meeting Ella. Mine was meeting Hana. Mine was meeting both of these lovely ladies. <laughs> My favorite memory <laughs> was all the drama that Mia caused jumping in the pool after hours. Hashtag free Mia. Free, free Mia. Mia. Um, my favorite memory was in uh, the cross country team. Like me and Peter here all cut during practice when we played uh, tag at the park. And then uh, the coaches found us. So my favorite memory was with me and Joe and a couple of guys from band. It was our first year in our cabin. And so we were throwing um, oatmeal cream pies at each other, and one of our guys got like the seam of it, and it exploded everywhere in our cabin room. Our sophomore year lunch table, because Josh and I would always stand on it, and we'd all get yelled at from all the staff. Yeah, and they would kick us out and make us sit at the other table because there was too many people. Favorite high school memory is, um, I would say, the last home football game. Um, hey, my favorite memory of high school is probably the symphonic choir trip to New York. Um, it was just a great time as like a last hurrah. Our memory was math class this year with Mr. Solars and my math table. We're going to miss this. Now back to me. Next Friday is the first day of finals for juniors, sophomores, and freshmen. If you're feeling stressed, the New York Times recommends taking a 10-minute walk outside every day to help lower stress levels and to maintain a healthy lifestyle. Here's a quick recap of today's school announcements. IB and AP testing continues today, and Gender Sexuality Alliance meets today after school in room 3404. Seniors must complete the exit survey in Naviance by clicking About Me in Surveys from Your School links. Seniors and their families are invited to participate in the student-led baccalaureate Christian service at 2 p.m. on May 22nd. This event is not sponsored by Upper Arlington High School or the Upper Arlington Board of Education. The daily announcements are accessible on Canvas and the Upper Arlington High School website. Now, Ava takes a look back on this year. We wanted to have us a good time before our time is up. <laughs> let's take a look. Now, let's kick it to Rory and Patrick with sports. <laughs> How can students sign up for trials? <laughs> Graveyards and zombies are all right. Court. Or. <laughs> 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 
Ooga Booga Bears in <laughs> Was our bathroom any cleaner than the high school bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was 10 out of 10 would be again. Okay, good. <laughs> Thanks for kicking it with us, Bears. It's making a great spooktober. Interview. <laughs> This has been Abe Adam and TV's reporting for the last time for the W-A-R-L. Thanks, Ava. Tune in next year to catch me, Patrick, and Elena with a new Kickin' It staff. And keep an eye out on our social media for new content during the summer. From all the Kickin' It staff, we want to thank you for sticking with us as we figure out this new studio. Best of luck to the juniors next year. Thank you for kicking it with us every week and have a fantastic summer, babe!